this is this is no no no. There's it's all nine. that's it's right. No, one. it's all weapons. It's just a CR one, <gasps> y'all. It's all our characters. Oops. Oh my god. Yeah, we've got weapons. <laughs> I love the critical role merch. I feel like I could single handed like single handedly keep you guys in business because I have gotten to the point where all I get from people for Christmas and birthday gifts is critical role things. Seriously? Yeah, like two Christmases ago, I very much went, oh, this has become my identity. Good to know. How did Critical Role get involved with creators in fashion? They, I, I think they just approached us uh, and we heard about the opportunity and we're absolutely stoked to join. You know, style theory is such a an awesome channel. And uh, the fact that we get to showcase our, our merchandise on a runway, which has never been done before, is really nerve wracking and exciting at the same time and getting to join with other audiences, you know, because I think a lot of the other creators involved and style theories audience is not necessarily the same as Critical Role's audience. So it's awesome to to get to like see other people in that environment. Why did this feel so in line with Critical Role's goals and values? Well, it really just felt like a really fun opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being real, uh, when it was presented as as something we, you know, we kind of jumped at the chance. Uh, I, I never imagined when we started Critical Role or when I started working on the merchandise for Critical Role that we would ever come to a place that <laughs> we would get to, you know, style models and, and you know, our own wonderful employees and, and cast that are walking the runway on this event, that we would get to showcase our clothing in that way. It's so new and exciting. And I think it just shows how much as a brand we've kind of grown um, since, since the beginning. And I love one of the things about this is it's very, it feels very fan driven and fan connected in a way that most like fashion shows wouldn't. Uh, what excited you about that aspect of it beyond the, we get to show our clothes on a runway. That's really freaking cool. What's kind of driven our design from the beginning, uh, has been fan interaction. You know, we've had, I, I I've been very present on Twitter and people have reached out to me going, oh, you know what I would love? Why, I would love to see, you know, a gesture dress or I would love to see uh, clothing based on the characters and to be able to reciprocate that and feed what people are feeding us um, has been really wonderful. And so uh, to have that interaction on the day is gonna be so different and so cool. I don't even know what to expect fully, but I'm, I'm kind of beside myself. I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of Critical Role's evolution of the merchandise because it started with, like some of my favorite stuff are almost the inside jokes that become merch. Like I love the Not the Best Detective t-shirt. I designed that one. It's so good. I wear that all the time. And then there's clothing that feel like more stylized and like you said, almost based on what the character would be wearing. Can you talk yes. to me about how like that evolution took place and how you've grown like in your role with that aspect of it. Yeah, when we first started, I was, we were creating basically t-shirts and stuff that we would wear. I loved the idea of an inside joke. I loved that it didn't necessarily scream critical role, some of our merchandise, but if people watched the show, then they would get the joke. And they, I loved that if you were out in public, you could meet people with similar interests because it would kind of show, you would know if they watched the show based on, you know, if they got the joke or not. Um, and then as our audience grew and we wanted to branch out from just doing, you know, t-shirts and hoodies, uh, which are still awesome and make up 80% of my wardrobe, uh, the idea of getting to do ready to wear clothing that are kind of more in universe, if that makes sense. Yeah, so basing designs on what the characters would wear in our world was just a really fun concept. And to create that and go, but what would our audience wear in conjunction with that? You know, like it would be easy to create clothing items that Yasha would wear, but it has to also coincide with what our fan base and our audience is gonna want to put on their body, right? So it can't just all be bandages and, and stuff like that. So that's why we created our, our Yasha hoodie with a slash mark. So it still is reminiscent of her while being something that you can wear in your day-to-day -day life. And then the Bell Tells collection to me really stands out from the other collections. I think it's most in line with the beauty of Exandria. Can you talk to me about what's been fun specifically about tapping into the Bell's Hells characters? Also just because these characters like 
aesthetically are so unique from each other. Yeah, I think that's what makes it so so different is that all of the characters have such strong personalities and such strong looks compared to each other. Uh, so we've been able to, like, if you just told me five years ago that we were going to be making a denim shirt, you know, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> I don't see that happening. But it made so much sense for Imogen to have that kind of a, almost a Western influence, right? Um, but we wanted to do it in a way that was still, you know, you could style it so it doesn't just have to be on a farm <laughs> or at a rodeo. Um, yeah, I think Bell's Hells is just everybody is so unique in their personalities. So we wanted to showcase that. And what's really fun is that we've been able to go back recently and look at Vox Machina again, because really when we were doing Vox Machina, that was even feasible at the time was to do cut and sew items based on the the characters. And so now we get to go back and we're working on a box Machina line as well. How does yeah. it feel going from the first time you guys had a t-shirt where it sold out before you were finished announcing it to now like you're showing off fashion on a runway. That's, that's crazy. Can you believe it? <laughs> when we first did that t-shirt, you know, we only made a hundred cause we didn't think anybody was going to buy it. And thank God we only did a hundred cause when it sold out, then we didn't think about the fact that we'd have to ship it. So all of us were just, you know, sitting in me and Travis's dining room, hand addressing the envelopes and sending them out. Like, so the whole cast did the shipping process on that first shirt. And now we've got six, I think six warehouses across the world that, that send out merchandise. So um, it's crazy that it's grown so much in, in the amount of time. Um, but at the same time, it's still about the fans. It's still about what what they want from us and what you know we're comfortable making as well. Is there maybe something that you haven't been able to tap into yet, be it like clothing or a different aspect of merchandise that you really would like to, but it just doesn't feel maybe feasible at the moment? I like the idea of doing housewares, um, just because I also really love you know decorating my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, like I said, I always make stuff that I want. Um, so yeah, that would be great is to, to be able to branch out into that world eventually. But, um, I, that's, it's a whole other, you know, factory situation that I don't, uh, you know, we'd probably just license a lot of it for now, but, um, <laughs> we made a joke earlier about doing chairs since that seems to be a running gag in our in our campaigns. So maybe we'll we'll create some chairs eventually. Chair. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Evil critical role furniture. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. Yes. I have the jester the sprinkle neck pillow that I'll wear on planes and just confuse everyone. It's great. It's so wonderful. I, I still feel like we could have made them a little more ragged, but then you wouldn't <laughs> want to wear it on your neck, you know? So just walk there's around. a fine line. It's so great. <laughs> I don't think, like one of the things I find very interesting about fashion, because I'm not someone that ever thought that much about it. So I think looking at it now as like this way of self-expression, especially as like I've gotten to become friends with people who use that really as like, hey, this is how I'm going to express my identity. This is how I show the world. Who what has it been like to kind of be able to do that in like almost this marriage of fans getting to express themselves and you guys getting to help them do that through their passion for critical role. It's been so wonderful. I've always been somebody who likes to express myself through clothing. And even depending day to day, my fashion choices will change to showcase who what I'm feeling like that day, you know? Um, so to be able to provide that for somebody else, and especially, you know, we go to, conventions, which we didn't get to do for so long because of because of COVID and everything, to start going to conventions again and see people in person wearing the clothing that we've been making. I want to cry so often when we're there and just seeing how people are taking those items and making it their own. Um, I see so many, you know, like Molly shirts, I think is one of our most popular items. Everybody looks so awesome in it. Everybody has styled it so well. And it, it, it's just, it makes me want to keep doing it. It makes me want to keep creating unique clothing items that um, people will appreciate because what's great about doing lines based on the characters is that you do get to appeal to a wider base of audience members, you know? So you can take the Caleb blazer and 
and wear it to, to work or you can wear one of our polos to work, you know, and get to like still feel like you're, you have your own interests while you're doing something that, you know, is not for yourself sometimes. <laughs> Which character has been your favorite to kind of be able to play with and find a way to bring their fashion in, like out of Exandria and into our world? Keyleth has been really wonderful. That, that will be coming later, you'll get to see. She's just, just really, really cool. Um, you know, the hardest one, this is a reverse of your question. The hardest one was FCG because I was like, what do we do? What do we do with that guy? And, but you know, it's been, it was great. We did a, we ended up going with this like Mr. Rogers vibe for it, which is why we did that cozy cardigan for them. Yeah, and I think it ended up working really well. There were a lot of different iterations of what that cozy cardigan would look like, but we wanted it different enough from the Caduceus cardigan that it would still feel fresh, you know? So, and then what's been really fun, I'm just talking now, but what's been really fun <laughs> is seeing which items maybe speak more to our audiences, like which ones sell faster or, and, and then being able to take that same, that same line and, yep. and, doing it again in a different color or a different so we have some really awesome um things coming out I don't, i'm like don't want to spoil anything too much we have some stuff coming out that's based on previous designs that are like in a new palette which is really cool the merch must kind of scratch a different creative itch for you than like voice acting or getting to play the improv of the D and all that kind of stuff how but how does it kind of merge for you when you get to like help design like how people are going to be able to show their love for Critical Role, but how does that kind of scratch the itch for you in a similar way to like when you're doing character creation? You know, that's a really, I hadn't thought about that. That's a really good point. It does kind of scratch that same itch. Uh, character creation is always one of the things that I enjoy the most, um, is putting a like a, a look together for what you're gonna be wearing for however many hours or days or weeks or years um so yeah it, it does have that same appeal um i think i really like seeing our characters come to life in a new way with the designs that we're doing i really enjoy seeing our cast members reactions when we get uh you know i'll get a sample in of of something and being able to show it to like the bomber jacket the orange bomber jacket that i was able to show to liam and to see his reaction to seeing that it was it, it just like brings joy to my heart to to get to see that um so i and i hope you know from the get-go our show has always been we're a bunch of geeks having fun together and i feel like our audience is the same as us you know like our audience it, it's a bunch of friends hanging out so hopefully if we like something then the audience will like it as well no i very much feel that that is the wavelength the audience is on because i feel like i'm on that wavelength a lot it's great that makes me very happy <laughs> i'm very excited to see you guys show off your clothing in a more um I guess controlled environment, but I do enjoy the unhinged announcement on the streams of the clothing. <laughs> yeah, the terror that I feel at the start of every episode when I'm going to be showing something, I don't know. You would think I would be better at it after all this time and it just all goes out the window. I'm, I am no better at it than I was 10 years ago. <laughs> Please never be more organized about it. It's so much fun. Like the announcements are so much more organized now. They're, it's right there. I just, I still am just terrible. I don't know. I don't know. And then I, I think I'm going to be talking on the day at Creators in Fashion. I think I'm going to be talking <laughs> about the items, which it's going to just, I got to go prepared. I gotta go prepared, man. No, you don't. Fully wing it. It's gonna be amazing. You're gonna see me having like a panic attack. <laughs> Cause you'll be there. You're gonna see me just like flailing. Oh yeah. Don't <laughs> stare at me. I'll be cheering. You're fine. It's gonna okay. Be I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find you. Oh, I goodness. probably will love the holding up no shirt and having post insert a shirt after. One of the best things I've ever seen. Because I was wearing the shirt and I didn't. I forgot to bring it in. This is the problem. They stopped letting me take stuff home now because I'll take it home and then I'll just add it into my wardrobe and I'll like just wear it. And then they're like, can you bring this item to show on the stream? And I'm like, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. <laughs> so yeah. I love that so much. 
Um, <laughs> how has being a part of this corner of Critical Role impacted your like character design, especially as we've gone through with like Jester and uh, Imogen, now that you've like been in this more? Gosh, you know, you would think that I would have thought more about it when I'm doing character <laughs> creation. That's a good point, you know? I should do that. I should think about what it's gonna, what's gonna affect the clothing <laughs> items you're gonna release. I, I do think about like, oh, what is this gonna look like in dice form as we're doing character creation now? But I, I don't go down the line yet and think about like, what is the clothing item gonna be? It's funny, cause some characters jump out a bit more, right? Like Ashton, I feel like they're easy to come up with clothing items for. I have so many things that I can imagine for Ashton, but Imogen is hard because like, I can't release suspenders. I can't, you know, like for Vex, we, uh, I guess I could, but would they sell? <laughs> you know? There's always this line of like, we could create something really niche, but uh, how many people are gonna want to, to put that on their body? I don't know. Maybe it'll surprise me. Maybe we should just like, that's what we did with the, the gesture dress. You know, I didn't know how many people were going to want to buy a cute dress with little bees on it and flowers, but I was shocked. It did really well. I was so happy that it did. That meant we got to do future dresses, you know, so then we got to do the Lana dress too, which also uh, did really well for us. So it's exciting. So the answer is do the niche thing is what it seems do to be. Do the niche thing. That's it. Has like, Kind of in that same vein, has becoming more involved in the fashion aspect like changed how you think about clothing when you're doing character creation? Not in the how will this look as merch, but maybe like, okay, I know my I want my character style to be this, but this is how I want to play with it. Yeah, well, I think I've always, and well, that's not true. Yeah, you're right. It has gotten more involved as I've gotten more involved in like creating clothing. Like, I think more in terms of how is this going to flow? Mm -hmm. um, how does this piece together? Um, you know, I, maybe that's why with Imogen, I've been very into creating this like sheer flowy clothing item that is always part of her, her design. Um, I think when we were originally doing Vox Machina, I, I would think in terms of color. So mm -hmm. I'd always want Vex to have that that through line of teal for her for her clothing um yeah i don't know, I, I i that's the first time i've realized it but you're right i'm curious how like it has been to because with the designing kind of the merchandise and stuff it's very much i would assume more of a partnership where with character design you're like this is how i want them to look and this is like my aspect of it. So how is that kind of translated into like the character design and animation where you kind of have to balance your desire of what you want to see with it versus like what's feasible and how the character designer and animators are able to interpret your creation? Yeah, there's, I, we, we did go back and forth a bit on, you know, character designs and stuff like that of like what, what piece, what item is it about that character that can't be lost right in when it's translated um and i think our, our our artist phil you know he he did such an amazing job of really capturing those characters in such a beautiful way i know like we're in the process of doing mighty nine right now uh in the animated world and you know like molly this is always a talisman issue because he always goes overboard with he because he he understands cosplay see so he would always create characters based on what will be fun for cosplayers. He wants them to have like a lot of fun with it. So like Molly's coat is beautiful, but like you cannot animate Molly's coat with all those designs, you know? So it's like, where's the line there? Where, what can we do? And we did the same with Percy's coat. It was very, very ornate in Taliesin's mind. And it had to be like, bruh, it's gotta be kind of like a blue coat. You know what I mean? Um, so there's there's give and take there. One of the things I love about Critical Role is how you guys always kind of find the next innov innovative way to like connect with the audience or tell the story in a way that I wouldn't necessarily expect. Like you've got the game publishing arm, you guys are doing animation, and then with like this fashion show, what's the next kind of path you'd like to see Critical Role take that maybe isn't the most anticipated, but you're like, oh, that would be really cool to dive into. Well, we keep talking about how much fun it would be to do video games. Yeah. 
I would love, I would love that. Just because that's that's where we started, you know, video games and cartoons. We did the cartoons. Video games are very hard to make, but darn it, I want, I would love to see, you know, I would love to see our characters and and be able to control them in a different way. That would be so cool. I'm gonna ask one animation question. It's not spoilery, so I'm hoping okay. you can do something about it. I'm careful. I know how it works. <laughs> With Mighty Nine coming, which I'm so hyped for, because that's how I found Critical Role. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. Um, what are you excited for fans to see that will make it stand out from what they've experienced with Legend of Vox Machina? I feel like Mighty Nine, in some aspects, was far grittier with the storytelling, even on stream. And so we are, we're getting to explore kind of those darker themes with Mighty Nine um, than, we, than we were able to or even that it didn't warrant it necessarily with Fox Machina in the same way. Um, that's all I got. That's fine. I'm, the stuff I've seen coming back for Mighty Nine, I'm very, very excited about it. Oh, I can't wait. And I can't wait for Jester's messaging. I fully was like, I hope they don't give Laura lines. I hope they're like, this is what you're trying to say. We're gonna cut you off at 20 I just cut it off? Yeah. Oh my gosh, what a way to do it. That would be amazing. I, I like let it. the writers know. Don't write, don't write it. Don't write lines. You know what though? Like when we get in the room, when we get in the recording booth, it kind of ends up that way anyway. Like everybody <laughs> just goes on tangents. So I love it. Um <clears throat> and then what has been kind of your favorite part of being able to do specific lines, like with uh Beauty of Exandria, which isn't specifically based on a uh, campaign. It's got more of like pulling everything into it, but finding a through line. There are so many aspects of Exandria and Matt's storytelling, and now uh, Bria's storytelling and Brennan's storytelling that I want to be able to explore and our, and our merchandising team wants to be able to see uh, tangibly uh, so to be able to do something like the Beauty of Alexandria collection and and like our giant tapestry blanket, you know, it was just so amazing to to show that calamity moment. Is that calamity? Oh, fighting of the gods. Is that calamity? Hmm. Um. Regardless, it's a uh, it's just really beautiful. You know, we had the motion of Alexandria. So when we originally started creating like these lines. Uh, it was kind of like, we want to think about items for each character and what do they mean? So how are we gonna fit them into like the beauty of Alexandria collection, you know? The wilds of Alexandria, the motion of Alexandria, the, you know, the dark academia of Alexandria and whatnot. Um, and then we kind of just like fit, decided which characters would fit into those vibes, right? Yeah. And then it ended up becoming Mighty Nine Collection. And then we're like, what are collections anyway? We're just gonna release what we want to release and call it what we want to call it. Um, but we are doing a, a Vox Machina collection, which I'm super stoked about. I'm very excited to check that out too. And then the last question yeah. I'll ask you, what is it like looking back from where you started like over nine years ago to where you guys are now as a company? I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> You know, we're still just a bunch of goobers playing pretend. Now we just play pretend a lot more than we used to, I guess. Like even when we first broke down like the roles within the company and Travis was gonna be CEO and Marisha was gonna be production queen and our and our daddy was Liam and I would, you know, do merchandise. It was it was just because that's what we said, oh that sounds fun, you know? And you know, it's a matter of like playing pretend and and pre faking your way through it until you actually understand what you're doing and then and then it's just your life. So, you know, I would have never thought that's where we would be right now and now it feels normal cuz it's it's what we're doing. I don't know. Now you have a fashion show. Now we have a fashion show. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, I'm mean, just like, how many can we, how can we style the clothes, but then also put something else on it? Like we have so much stuff. Yeah. So, and I think each, each 
creator is getting like 10, 15 minutes to do their walks. So how, whatever looks you can fit into that amount of time, you know, like around 10, 11 looks, something like that. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's amazing how really head to toe we could style each model. It's like a matter of, do we want to put everything on each person or just like, you know, showcase one, one item at a time. So it's, it's a fun process right now of figuring out what the models are going to look like. And so your note to the models was please run as quickly as you can up and down. <laughs> yeah. so. Run, pause, run back. You know, we, the people walking on our side are, you know, our employees and our, and Talison's walking and like, he's so great at this stuff. I don't know how he always looks like so wonderful doing whatever he does. He's also like incredibly photogenic. Anytime we take pictures, I'm always like, dang it, Talison. Um, but yeah, like I would be so nervous walking. They asked if I wanted to walk and I was like, are you kidding? No, I'm going to talk. I'll talk. <laughs> bad at that too, but at least I won't trip on my fall on my face. I cannot wait for the show. I can't wait for all the new merch you guys put out. I just, I've said it before, whatever you guys want to throw at me, I'm game. I love all the things you guys do. <laughs> it's so fun. Critical Role is genuinely like not only one of my favorite shows, it's one of my favorite companies. So I am so happy for you guys.